Do you know anything about playing the water at all? Only what Mick and Paul have told me. Right, high up in the Himalayas. And then I, then I had a look, in, uh, look on, the, on Google. Okay. A couple of things. High up in the Himalayas. Yeah. Um, Pakistani side of the Himalayas. There's a valley called the Hunza Valley where the Hunza people live. Mm -hmm. Now they typically live till they're 110, 120. And throughout these lot, their long lives, they're disease free. Now to us that might seem a burden, you know. Mm -hmm. But as I say, you know, with good health, a long life, they've got none of the Western diseases that we have, and when they're sort of you know 110, 120, they physically look 70 or 80. So, consequently, Russian and Japanese scientists did a study on their lifestyle and their water, and they found that their water, which is fed from the crisp glasses in the Himalayas, one of the purest, most unpolluted waters on the planet, has three amazing properties which they've replicated in these amazing ionizers. We'll go through the cleaning process, by the way. And the first, process, uh, first quality of the water is very high in alkaline, which flushes out all the acidity within our bodies, and it actually alkalizes the colon, where the great majority of the bodily ailments originate from. And it's the considered opinion of Dr. Hiromi Shinya, world-renowned gastroenterologist, mm -hmm. who's examined the intestines, digestive tracts and colons of over 300,000 patients in his time, it's a medical fact that disease cannot exist in an alkaline environment. It needs acidity. So this first quality of the water is disease prevention. Second quality, um, it's very high, in anti very high antioxidant property. Now within our bodies we have things called free radicals. By the way, sorry Steve, I'm a, I'm a layman, I'm not a doctor or a scientist. If you, want, if you want more in-depth information, I've got books and links I can send you, but I'll try and explain in layman's terms, you know. That's good for me. Within our bodies, we have things called free radicals, which are the precursors for disease to begin. Now, the very high antioxidant properties of kangaroo water have the ability to neutralise these oxygen-rich free radicals before disease can begin. An analogy I can give you is, um, you know when you slice an apple? Mm -hmm. That white flesh is exposed to the air. Um, you know, it's, it's oxidising, it's aging, it's rusty. This is what's happening within our bodies. And we need to eat plenty of foods that are high in antioxidants or drink liquids such as kangaroo water, which has the high antioxidant properties, so that we can neutralise these oxygen-rich free radicals within our body before they're able to, you know, diseases able to begin from them. Mm -hmm. So again, this second property is also disease prevention, one of the reasons why tons of people live so long. Third property, at a molecular level, the structure of the water, it's got very small water molecule clusters, typically four or six, as opposed to the larger water molecule clusters, 15 or 20, of ordinary water and unprocessed fog waters. Consequently, these small water molecule clusters, we call it microclustering, are able to bring nutrients into our cells and take waste out of our cells six times faster than ordinary water ever can. In effect, it superhydrates the body, brings it back to its homeostasis, and it lets the immune system do what it's put there for, you know, to repair the body, fight disease, etc. So as I say, combined with those three qualities, this is one of the most beneficial waters on the planet. It actually changed my life four years ago. Um, prior to starting drinking the water, I was a 55 year old male. I had a heel problem called plantar fasciitis, which was very, very painful. You get up in the morning, you couldn't put any weight on it, you know. I've been to the doctor for it over the past two or three years. She gave me exercises which made it worse. I had a knee problem from the cartilage industry. My legs were heavy, and I was generally, you know, a uh, middle aged man, 55 year old man, but I was probably about 20 years older than I was, you know. Mm. I physically felt 75. If I saw a set of stairs, I'd oh, yawning all day long. Within two or three weeks of drinking this water, my heel problem had cleared up, my knee had gone, I had so much more energy. And now, at 59 years of age, um, I'm back playing tennis again, I'm beating guys not years younger than me, decades younger than me. And at 59, I feel better now than I did in my 20s and 30s. And it's all thanks to this amazing kangaroo water. I mean, this was the catalyst for me, you know, because I felt so good on the water, I started looking at my diet, 
putting um, organic veg into my diet, etc. Started taking supplements, started exercising. So, as I say, the amazing cancer water was the catalyst for me to, to get my life back, my life and my health back. Right, the first part of the demo, Steve, mm -hmm. I'm going to try to explain the micro clustering capability, you know, the small water molecule clusters that I was talking about. And we do that with a, a green tea bag. Now, as you know, when you make tea, you get your tea bag, you get your water, but you boil your water, don't you? Mm -hmm. Um, the micro clustering capability of the candy water is actually able to get in and pull the flavour of the tea out, you know, without the water being heated. Now this is ordinary water. I'll dip the tea bag in and you'll see that it will struggle to, to get any flavour out. Whereas the candy water, because of its micro clustering capability, You can see it draws the flavour out straight away. Mm. Now you may think, all right, you're cheating because you know the tea bag was wet from the first one, but I'll put ordinary water back in there. And you'll see, all right, into these last two cups. I'll put ordinary water into this one. Can get water into this one. And you can see there's a marked difference. Now, I mean, not only do I use this water for drinking, but I use it for cooking at home, tea, coffee, and when you use it for these purposes, you know, you need less tea and coffee, you need less spices because it's able to draw the flavour out, you know. So it really is the most remarkable. So hopefully that's given you a rough idea of the micro clustering capability of this amazing can get water. Mm -hmm. The next part of the demo is going to involve, I'm going to show you the, um, the oxidation reduction potential of the water. And for that I'm going to need a bit of audience participation. So with your permission, Steve. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you this, all will become apparent. We're going to use four or five liquids that you know uh, an average typical family may have in their homes. Volvic, touch of fruit. Tesco aspect. Smart water. And of course our very own canyon water. So this is an oxidation reduction potential meter sieve. Tell us whether the liquid has the ability to neutralise these oxygen-rich free radicals within our body. Any when I turn it on, any reading above zero means it's an oxidant. It's not doing our bodies any good at all. Okay, we need a reading below zero. Okay. So when I dip it into each liquid, I like to take the pen and the sticky notes if possible. Just record whatever reading we get on the litre. And what I'll do, I'll take it from you, Steve, and I'll stick it in front there just so we can remember at the end. Yeah. So I say at the moment it's measuring the air, it's saying 406. So let's put it in the volvic and see what it gives us. Can you see that? Still going straight. I think for the sake of the um, 
Three, three, six. Yeah, that'll be fine, I would have said. Thank you. Right, so that was Volvic. We got 336. Tesco Aspec. See what the Tesco Smart Water says. Okay, thank you. Right, now remember what I said, guys these anything above zero is an oxidant. It's not doing our bodies any good at all, it hasn't got the ability to neutralize these disease-inducing, oxygen-rich free radicals within our body. We're looking for a, a negative reading, something below zero, okay? So I'm gonna put it into our kangen water, which you've been drinking, by the way. Let's see what it gives us. It's never let me down yet, and I'm not even gonna look. What I normally do, I look at my customers' faces to see if there's any reaction. Yeah, it's just a bit different, yeah? Is it? <laughs> Well, that is different, isn't it? Okay. It's actually, I mean, you've written. Well, the fact is going up as well. It's still, still going down, 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 yeah. Do you mind if we just rewrite that one? Absolutely. I thought it had settled. Yeah, no, it's still. In fact, I mean, for the sake of it, put minus 630. Steve, if you don't mind. Still going. Thank you. Thank you. Right, now to show you the third benefit of the water, the third property of the amazing Canyon water, um, water, the third property of the amazing Canyon water. Um, I've got a little pH tested liquid here. I'm going to drop three or four drops into each one and we'll see if it's acidic or alkaline. Obviously acidic is not good for our bodies. We're looking for alkalinity to neutralize, to, or sorry, to throw the acidity out of our bodies and actually alkalize our colon. As you can see from these first four, as well as all being oxidants, they are all one degree or another on the acidic scale. Yeah. The fizzy ones, the seven up and the volvic being the worst, as you can probably see. I'm gonna drop the same three or four into the canker water, but we need um, a virtual or proverbial drum roll first, if we can. <laughs> so let's just see, that's it, that's excellent. <laughs> There we go, guys. Look. Now I'm going to ask a ridiculous question. Now, I mean, as I say, the first four, they're all oxidants. They have absolutely no. Um, they're all acidic as well, one degree or another. We've got the canyon water, which is high alkalinity, which has got the ability to throw out the acidity within our bodies and alkalize our colons. It's got very, very high antioxidant properties, which can has the ability to neutralize these oxygen rich free radicals in the body. Which of these five liquids, guys, would you rather put in your bodies? It's a no-brainer, isn't it? I don't even have to ask these, do I? It's, you know, it's a no-brainer. I mean, you're tasting the water there now, and it's, it's absolutely, you know. As I say, I've been drinking this for four years now, and it's absolutely changed my life. I just want to show you guys um, the ability of the water 
You saw me at the beginning of the demo, five or ten minutes ago, the two different rolls of tomatoes. Now in the growing process, in the fields, are you aware of what happens, Steve? You know, everything, the stuff that's sprayed, sprayed on to yeah, the produce, yeah. insecticides, pesticides, herbicides, they're all carcinogenic, which is cancer giving. They, you know, they, it lays in our bodies if we don't wash it off properly. But you get your produce home from the shops, you think you're washing it off in the tap water, but the tap water hasn't got the ability to take it off because they're oil and petroleum based. If they weren't oil and petroleum based pesticides, first bit of rain in the field, it'd wash them off. Yeah. Canadian water actually has the ability to emulsify oil and it lifts off the pesticides and herbicides. So with your permission, we want to do a taste test. Are you going for one, Nick? I don't know the one, yeah. I won't be spitting mine out. <laughs> Taste of tomato there, Steve. Yeah, that tastes good. Right, compare it to the second ones, gentlemen, please. I say this is washing ordinary water. I normally give my customers this because nine times out of ten, the second one is spat straight out. Do you want to film this part? Or sorry, Mick, there you go. So the same without you know washing the normal water. All this pesticide is laying in our, you know, in our bodies and you know cancer causing. So that's it gentlemen. Thanks for your time. That's, that's a very brief you know pros, proxies of the water. Um, There's definitely more flavour in the first one. Without a doubt, without a doubt as I say most people spit that second one straight out you know. So, <coughs>